welcome. Um, I'm Chando, and transpersonal therapist and energy medicine practitioner, uh, sitting in beautiful Tokoa, Gushetion. And I'm so happy to be here sharing with you guys. Thank you, Erez. Thank you, everybody on the team. Um, this is amazing. What you guys are creating is mamash beyond. Um, so tonight I wanted to share with you guys um, on the subject of Ketev, a big subject here in Rosh Hashanah. The upcoming holiday um, is giving God his crown. Uh, we have the song in the tefillah, and they will give to you your crown of glory. So what does this mean? Why did I call the class Surrender Your Crown? What is this all about? So um, for starting out, I think that it's important to understand what this idea of Keter really is. So in the Sfirot, um, you can see here this diagram of the Sfirot, we have Keter at the top, the uppermost Sfira, and we have Chochma Bina Da'at here, these next three. These are the mental faculties, the consciousness. We have um, Chesed Gvura Tiferet, which is the emotional body. We have Netach Hod Yesod and Malchut, which are the realm of physicality, of doing action and Malchut, which is manifestation. So we're gonna be focusing on Keter, on the crown. Um, being the uppermost sphere, all the shefa, all of the light energy that comes into our being comes through the keter of sphere. Now, let me just back up for a second. The sphirot, um, I mean, we could give hours and hours of, of talk about just the sphirot, but um, to be concise, the sphirot are the macro and the microcosm, meaning every single thing in existence is composed of them and every single thing in existence has them it has it as its inner mechanics that the inner workings of everything is the sphere so in the same way we also have these energy centers in us um, and keter is the uppermost sphere so it's talking about it's spoken about in sfifre kabbalah as being ratzon um, will, longing, right? Ratzon of the things that I am deeply, deeply desiring, longing for, that are beyond. It's also spoken about as makifin, things that are surrounding the surrounding lights. So the light of Keter is really beyond us. It's not actually embodied yet. It is just beyond us. Um, and this is connected to what we call superconscious, right? A superconscious is not in my awareness, but rather a place that I can access if I choose to through work and through connectivity to the higher spheres um, in order to bring light down. So to explain the power of Keter, um, we'll go back to the beginning, back to Bereshit. Um, in Perek Bet, it talks about how Adam HaRishon woke up in Gan Eden, uh, he was just created, and he woke up into a wasteland. There was absolutely nothing, and it was a desolate space. And he cried out to God and said, "God, I need food. I'm I'm here. I'm alone. I need food. I, what am I doing here?" And uh, there's a Gemara in Masechet Cholin that says that the plants, the vegetation here, were actually created previously, right? Adam was created on the sixth day, and the vegetation was created on the third day. So there should be plenty of trees and grasses and herbs and all sorts of things growing, but there was nothing. So how do we explain this? So they say that the vegetation was omed tachat pnei hashetach. It was just under the earth, waiting for the prayer of Adam Harishon to bring it into being. So Adam asks Hashem, 
Hashem, give me food. The rain comes and the plants grow and um, Adam has what he needs. So I've always loved this story. Um, I always just like, yeah, really connect to it. Mm -hmm.